Good evening, and welcome to another uh, episode with The Bench Jeweler. Our website is mybenchjeweler.com. We generally try to remember putting it in the links down below. So, tonight's subject is part B of troubleshooting, cleaning, and oiling your cuckoo clocks. So, this one here is a little more complicated. Uh, per se because it, it had uh, bushings which were very questionable or pivots which were very questionable uh, if you want to come over here and take a look uh, there's a bushing, a new bushing put in here and there's one over here there's a couple over here I actually had to take this uh, clock down and uh, rebush it and so there's a bushing right here that we, we put in. There's a bushing right here that we put in. And we put a bushing right in here. And that cleaned up all these pivots and then we, we polished the pivots. Uh, this clock would probably have run, but since it's a customer clock, I you know I had to go in, clean it, and do it right. But uh, I, it's still the same procedure, so I want to show you quite a, a bit about how to troubleshoot and make sure that you can now <clears throat> Get your uh, clock oiled and running properly. So uh, you have to be very careful when you take these out of the case that you don't bend the verge here. That's connected to the uh, escape wheel, and it can only you can see that it stops right here and it stops here. But if you bend this inward or, or you go past uh, this point here, it's not going to uh, tick tock right. So you'll have to redo the tick tock. But if you if you uh, run into that problem, well, we have a, a troubleshooting method to fix that. So let's start with, uh, since we've got it all rebushed, uh, and I also have oiled it, but I want to go through the oiling procedure with you and uh, see if you can get a, clear up a, a few problems here. Now, these are the uh, oilers that we sell, and we uh, don't buy these from China. <laughs> these are manufactured by us. And they're they're about five times the, the quality. You can see how strong these are. If I did that with a little watch oiler and try to oil your clock, you'd have it bent and maybe broke before you, before you even got started. Uh, don't drop these, by the way. They they aren't they they are pretty solid. Like I said, I can pound on that pretty good, and it's not going to bend or do anything like that. But but uh, if you drop it on the floor, you might you might bend it. So, <clears throat> with that said, uh, I like using, uh, I, I've told you before that you could use uh, the uh, CR uh, contact cleaner, and uh, it does work as long as you don't spray your plates. Uh, it has a tendency to eat your plates if you, uh, they lacquer off your plates if you do that, so don't do that. Uh, I've kind of changed my tune on that a little bit. Uh, I like... Uh, Two things. I like to use a little alcohol if I over oil it and I can use the, uh, the oil extraction pin which is right here or I can use mineral spirits and you can buy a little or a small little can of uh, uh, mineral, oil, odorless mineral spirits and that will clean your clock. In fact you could uh, pour the whole can into a little plastic box and use the paintbrush and clean this whole clock and uh, sometimes you, you need to. Uh, especially on cuckoo clocks, I, they and, and uh, uh, sludge and stuff from the dust in the air. It's just like a magnet. It seems to attract itself right to the oil sinks and the uh, and the gears inside. So I, we in the first uh, video part A, we checked these. Now you can see that since I uh, fixed put these new bushes in here, there is no play. It's just perfect and it's all the way up and then we put uh, a bushing in this one this uh, gear here and you can if if your uh, cuckoo clock has a, a screw on the side of it it's it's okay to, to take this off you can see the screw right here I think it's right there it's, it's okay to take that off of there and uh, this will lift right off and uh, then you can oil the uh, shaft here but if yours does not have a screw that means it's frictioned on there and don't try to take it off of there. Uh, they're Loctited in there and uh, 
you'll twist off your shaft before you get one off. So how do you do it then? So <laughs> you, you can't get underneath of this gear. So the only other way to do that is to turn it sideways. And uh, let's see if I can get it this way. There you go. And you can actually, that's why these oilers are made so long. And so, and you got a nice little hole right clear back here. So you can actually come in here and just touch that shaft with a little bit of oil. And you might have to follow with your uh, extractor, put a, put a little alcohol in that, and just rub around that. It's going to, and that'll get the, the, the oil, the, the too much oil that collects on there. And you get that off of there, and then you can make sure that this, I just wiggle it, you can see whether you got oil in there or not. I hope I'm explaining that enough for you. But uh, sometimes uh, you can't get to, a, to a, a pivot without having to use the, the long part of the, uh, the oiler and you have to oil it from the inside of the, in the plates. So that's uh, lesson one in troubleshooting your cuckoo clock. Number two, after you've checked all your gears, you've gone this way and made sure there's not too much play in them. I mean, if they bounce up and down in there and you can see a huge bounce, then you, you've got other problems. You're not, the oil probably won't work for you. But uh, can't, no way to tell that until you get these cleaned. So, uh, inside here are all the cog gears, like right, uh, see if I can, I'm looking at the video trying to monitor, trying to tell you, right, these right here, uh, right there, those little gears in there <clears throat> collect a lot of grease. So, the thing you want to do is you want to come in here with your little pointers on your, uh, swabs your cleaning swabs and you want to scrape that off and it takes a while so don't don't plan on taking your cuckoo clock out and just quickly oiling it because it's not gonna it's, it's going to take longer than that but if it's not dirty in here then don't mess with it and if it gets so dirty that you can't get all the the, the uh, sludge and stuff out of these gears then you're going to have to put it in a little bit of uh, mineral spirits and use a little little brush and and uh, you could even use a little toothbrush if you can get in there and clean those gears out. Uh, that's very important. So that's a, a troubleshooting point too that I want you to, to remember. Check, check these little gears uh, inside. These, let's see if I can get one. Uh, this one here is the gear. See the little cog there? So you can clean these out. And there's another one. and. There, there's another one up here so you have to make sure that those are as clean as you can get them and uh, that will sure help you when you're oiling this clock because otherwise it, it's not going to run right so now the next thing I want to troubleshoot with you on is the oilers a lot of people are, are not understanding quite what you're going to do with these and these are really unique so first of all they're, they're pretty stout they're not just going to hit it and bend. Uh, they're not watch oilers. They're actually clock oilers, and they're made for clocks. I can't uh, emphasize that enough. The uh, oil cups that we send with you on the kits, you put that oil in here, and the deeper you lay this in there, see how far I laid that in there now? Look at the amount of oil on this. Way too much for a little clock like this. Maybe one of the great big uh, 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 grandfather clocks, uh, it would uh, be enough on the, just the, the uh, chain shafts, but uh, it's, too much. it's too much here. But that's no problem. You just touch it lightly on, on, on a paper towel. Now look at how much I've taken off of there. And there's still, still plenty of oil on here, and this will probably oil, oh, two or three, maybe two pivots in here in the oil sink. Now I've already oiled this but I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do one or two of these just to show you. So I'm going to clean this off, put in a little alcohol, clean this off a little bit. Now I'm going to overload it. See there's a, see if you can see this. That's an awful lot of oil and I'm going to touch it right here. 
Now I've purposely put way too much oil on this, as you can see. So that's not a problem. You use your oil extractor, put a little alcohol on that, and then don't push it into the pivots, but go around the outside. Just like that. Now you see how I, I, I dried that off? You come back in here and do it again. Stay, don't push it into the well. So now I can take the a clean swab and I can come over the very top just like that. And now you've got just the right amount of oil in there. And uh, that's why we use those extractors. And it works beautiful. And these can be cleaned. Put it back in the oil. I'm sorry. Put it back in the alcohol. And just roll it around. And it's ready for the next one. So if you need a lot of oil and you have a big clock and you have a big shaft that's got a, you can probably get away with just that much oil. And I think you can see that oil on there. It's, and it's almost too much. Now it is too much for these little cuckoo clocks. You got, they're just little sinks. So just take the little tip and just see how I just barely touched that. Now we can come over here. touch that and you can see just the right amount of oil in there. Now, it, 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 <laughs> let me look. Perfect. There's no, no uh, excess oil on the outside. I can't see the oil inside and uh, it's about right. So we won't even need to use the extractor. It's all in, uh, uh, in touch. You just barely, barely, barely touch the oil. And that's all you need to, to penetrate the uh, pivots in your clock. These are absolutely fantastic for that purpose. And uh, we also give you grease, and we give you a greaser, and that's used for cams and uh, things like that. So if you watch this one here, I'm just going to go point them out. There's an oil, or, uh, oil well here, here, here. Now, like I said, they take the screw off here, and you can remove the, this, this cam, and you can get the oil in that shaft. And just what you want to do is kind of be careful and, and put it back about where you had it. So when you start running your clock, before you actually run the clock, turn your hands around on the front and, and do a, a dry run here. You can probably push these gears. And, uh, and make sure that the this is back in the right place. You should have two drops, one, two, as you as you turn it around. So each one of these cams drops at the uh, bellows. So you got to kind of be careful where you uh, took this off at. In fact, you could use a, a little uh, black marker and just put a little black mark right in front of one of these these uh, feet here, and then you know exactly where to put it back. So, uh, these are a little more complicated than, than they look. So, all right, so let's go on. So, all you want to oil this one here. You want to oil this one, this one, this one, this one, this one down here. You've got one right here, right here. And then, escape wheel. Now, I've taught you to use the, uh, the heavyweight uh, uh, oil, which is called escape wheel oil. It's a, it's a real neat brand, but you don't really, uh, I, I, I have my brothers on whether we actually need that oil or not. I'm thinking about just using this. Now, I'm going to clean this off. Your escape wheel is going to be at the top, and it's going to have, it won't have, it has a little feet on it. Let's see if I can get this, let's see if we can get this in there a little tighter. Okay, now you see over here, see, see, uh, oops, you see all the, the, let me get this out of the way. You see all these teeth? That's a gear. You see the teeth on this right down here? Well, I'm trying to point to it. Ah, there we go. Right, right there. That is an escape wheel. And what you want to try and do is just put 
ever so light uh, a drop of oil just if you just barely touch it right here that's plenty and you're going to come in here and you're going to try and put it i'm going to see if i can keep it out of the, the way here you want to put i see how it drew off of that and you just touch it and you go every other tooth right there right down there Let's see if I, I get my big fingers out of there okay you touch it just touch it on the very very touch very the very top of, the, of that uh, tooth every other one and uh, then you can just move this so I might have to put a little pressure on it Oops, hold on. Okay, put a little pressure on that gear. Oh, let's see. See how that's moving? So you move it about eight or ten teeth, and then you can touch it every other tooth uh, all the way around. And now, don't worry about it if you happen to hit two or three teeth in a row. That's that's fine. You just want to get a little bit of oil you know, on at least 10 or 15 teeth of the 60 that are on there. And uh, the rest of uh, that, that oil will go all the way around and it'll, this is your uh, pellet fork or your fork or your verge. The little piece that's moving back and forth there. This little piece moving back and forth. You can see it right here. That's your, your verge or your, your, your pellets. And once you get that gear, that escape wheel, oiled about 15 teeth it will uh, lubricate all the teeth so it's it's real important not to get too much oil on that once again you can use the extractor if you see a big glob on those teeth and take it off use a little alcohol just take it off there and you start over again and uh, that's the, that's the way you oil that now I put on your swing arm for your bird I put a little dab of oil here and a little dab of oil right here and then there are two here there's the uh, this is the hammer that uh, this here is the hammer see the hammer so I put a little dab of oil here here and here and I do it down here in the inside one two three let's see if I can show you that again you oil it a little oil right here you can go on the outside of that here and here 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 and here all right so yeah you got the swing arm right here okay now on the out front side you want to oil every pivot there's one here there's one here but don't forget your uh, your collector your clutch pin that uh, raises the rack and uh, you can get right underneath of that and oil it right there right here right here now uh, you can get to the uh, center gear from the inside if you're really careful you can actually touch it right in there and drop a just a drop of oil in there and if you get a little too much you just go ahead once again use your oil re retractor and just take it off of there and it'll be fine because it's going to suck upward and that's what we want and it'll stay put now you can take the uh, clip spring off of here and pull this off and oil the shaft if, you, if, you're, if you're careful but uh, boy you want to put your finger right on the top of that use a little pair of tweezers or a little bitty very fine pick or a, a real fine screwdriver uh, let's see if I can find something here now I have a little tweezers here uh, there's a c-clip right here and you can take that c-clip off and you can pull this rack up a little bit and just get a little oil underneath there if you're worried about it, uh, don't do it. Uh, use a little healthier amount of oil and drop it right here on this shaft. And then just work this shaft up and down a little bit like that. 
and uh, it'll probably get enough uh, oil in there. Do not oil this shaft. You don't need the, 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 the uh, in between the, uh, the uh, hand and the uh, snail. You don't need the oil inside of that. Leave that dry. Uh, you can drop a little oil right here on this plastic gear and uh, don't, I don't recommend greasing these uh, unless you're going to pull the whole gear off and I, I don't, I don't do it. So, well I do, but I don't want you to do it. <laughs> Trust me, you don't need to. Now, there is a ratchet gear on the chains. It's right there. You want to take just a drop of oil and put a little drop right there in that ratchet. And maybe one or two spots around it. You'll see where the ratchet has a little bit of a gear. Then you turn it over and you do the same on this side. You put a little dab right here. Put a little dab of oil right there. And that's all you need. Now one other place. You, this is the clutch that releases the bird. See? See how he stays in there? Now he's come out. So you want to put just a little dab of oil on the bar. And just a tiny little dab. I'm going to show you how much. You just barely touch this. That's too much. We'll just get rid of it. Okay. Just a tiny. It's a little hard for me to see. Because I'm watching the monitor. But There. Just a little dab. And I haven't oiled this yet because I wanted to save that for you guys. Just put him on there. You see the shaft, the, the bar, right here? You just put a little dab on there so that so that lets this click. Now this this the oil on this this bar here, the shaft, will come up and, and put it'll actually put a little bit of oil right in here. Don't try and over oil these. It just takes a little tiny dab. And uh, if you get too much, that's why I gave you these. These clean it up, and, and they're usable for three or four times. So, you know, you might want to throw one away uh, after you've used it for a whole afternoon trying to, trying to uh, oil your clock. And, and I kind of laugh because it, it takes a little bit of practice to do this right. And uh, then uh, you are ready to put your chains back on. And your chains, you can tell which way they go. Uh, see, see, I can actually. Well, let's see if I can go this route. See how it turns one way, but it won't turn the other way. And uh, same here on this one. So, pretty easy to put the chains back on. Now, I recommend putting these chains in a little bit of uh, mineral spirits. And then use a hair dryer and dry them off. You just swoosh them around for just a little bit in a little little baby cup of, of mineral spirits, and just go ahead and uh, dry them off really good. Make sure your your hair dryer works good. So then these will be clean, and they won't because uh, these collect dust and oil and grease too. So uh, you want to try and keep those clean. So then. <clears throat> You want to pull her out, and let me get this one started, and I'll show you. All right. See now how I, I I've got that started in there. And I just want to roll it. That's really difficult to try and show you this. Let's see if I can get it. Now you can see it. You want to keep rolling it and, and lay it up, up like this until it comes out the bottom. So, you see how it comes out the bottom? Now, it, whoops, I, I screwed up here a little bit. <laughs> I was afraid that was going to happen because I can't see. Uh, well, darn it. Alright. 
So now you just want to keep your hand, your finger on it there, and just pull her, pull her down so you're all the way halfway. There you go. And then you just do the other one the same way, exact way. I'm, I'm kind of backward here. I'm sorry about that. But that's how you put your chains back on. See how, how that's done? And then the other one, you want to make sure it comes, it's, it's down, and you don't want it to lay over the top of your bar here. That's not the one. You want it to stay on the inside. Now this one, you just, it starts on the outside, on, on the inside of this post here, and you just turn it just like that. Then you want to turn it up straight up. Like this, and you see how I got that? Got my hands there, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull it all the way down, so it's halfway. So it's exactly the book, the two ends are in the middle. There. So we've got that done. Now, please use your little caps. Don't jam them up there. Just Stick them on her, just like, just like this. If you push really hard, you can push it right on through there and maybe damage the tip. So just, just a little dab. That's all you need. And uh, you can put uh, a lid on this oil if you have it contaminated. But if it's got a lot of black or, or sludge in there, just, just dump it. Uh, there's no sense in contaminating the rest of your the oil. And I give you ample amounts of oil. Uh, no quarter quarter ounce. It's a half ounce of oil, and believe me, it'll it'll oil quite a few clocks. So now these, uh, I give you four of them, and they last. Uh, you know, you can you can probably do four or five clocks with these. Uh, if you have more than that, you might want to. We sell packages of these with uh, uh, I think 15 or 16 uh, uh, cleaning swabs and six of these. And that's enough to do 10 or 15 clocks easily. And uh, now the, the swabs, you, you can't reuse these. Once you've started using them, they're done. And there's a point on the back and the back the, the back side of that. And that's used to dig out that oil. You know, you can't just dig it around like that and then oil it. You, a lot of people think they can do it that way. You can't. You got to use your swab, dip it in a little bit of uh, mineral spirits, and clean this area, and then you can uh, move on from there. So, and uh, that's how you do it. So, that's about all the tips I have for that. Now, the first tip I gave you is when you take these bellow wires off, is tape one of them to your to your bell. Because if you end up spending a day and a half uh, trying to get these cleaned up, you might, you're gonna, these are gonna fall off, and then you're gonna wonder which one goes where. And uh, you can get them on the wrong side, and you can actually tear this little bell right here. You can actually tear that if you put the wrong uh, wire on there. That's the bell wire. So, and if you get the wrong one on there, you're, and you try to, pull, you know, make your cuckoo clock sound off by pulling the chain. Uh, you can tear these and then you're done. Then you're going to be buying one of these bellows and they're not that easy to put on. They're, they're not that hard either. But they're about 15 bucks. And by the time you get them shipped in, you got $20 in them. So that's why it costs so much to clean a cuckoo clock because most of the time these bellows are shot. And if you look, this is, this is a new bell put on here. So this clock had been cleaned all maybe five or ten years ago, but it wasn't cleaned properly, and no, I didn't do it. But uh, it wore out the, the uh, pivots in these shafts here, so I had to rebuild them. So, all right, enough said with that. Yeah. Tape, tape at least one of those, <laughs> please. And then you won't have to worry, you know, unless you lose the other wire, but there's the other wire. And you can tape that too. So you don't get them mixed up. That's the whole idea, and because uh, these are, they're both different. Let's see, uh, 
me get over here and show you. All right, this one belongs in that one, but this one here, if I match it up, you see how much it's it's shorter. Oops, there we go. It's shorter, so you want to keep these uh, keep these each of these wires with with the bellow they come off of. Uh, that's another troubleshoot point, uh, so that you don't tear your bellows up. I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but I just can't emphasize enough on this. So that's about it. So now it, it goes back in the same way you took it out. And uh, let's see if I can sort of give you a halfway demonstration on that. I'll be back in just a minute.